Well, time certainly does fly because we are already at the end of April. And yeah, I mean, I've said this many times, but yeah, I've been very busy lately. Um, school, work, other miscellaneous things have been really piling on these past couple weeks. I mean, I've been so busy that if you can see BCs right here, those are from last month. I have not yet put them in the actual collection yet. And you're probably wondering what these CDs back here are. Um, you know, those are just CDs meant for other series I'm doing on other people's channel. And again, I was just too lazy to put them back. Uh, so yeah, um, but of course this is the CD haul and I am going to admit, um, I got like 29 CDs here. Um, and then I will say, I didn't get a chance to listen to all of them. I listened to most of them, but there's quite a bit I didn't get a chance to listen to because of my hectic schedule recently. But of course, I'm still going to showcase it, of course. Um, so hopefully, you'll still enjoy this video. Um, if you enjoy these CD hauls, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you are new. And without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it because I have schoolwork to do right after this. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm just going to get this one out of the way. So I shown this in a record store finds video earlier this month. Um, we have this, of course, uh, the infamous uh, butcher cover on CD. I did I did a short on it. it. Kind of, you know, kind of took that clip and just made a short out of it. And people, some people got the got the joke. Some people didn't get the joke. Um, but regardless, um, so I will say I didn't, I did not listen to this one yet because I mean, I already know all the songs on here, so I don't see an, an interest to listen to it. But again, I just got this for the novelty and, you know, just to say I got a butcher's cover in some capacity in a sense, um, it's, it's probably a lot easier to get than the real thing. So there you go. Just, again, just wanted to show that. Um, but now let's get into the things I did listen to and just, I got four CDs, well, yeah, four CDs from this band and I've been trying to complete their catalog and actually I'm very close. Um, I just need two more albums from them. I did order them, but they're, they're going to be here sometime in May and the band is ABBA. So I have ended up getting their debut, Ring Ring, and I have Voulez-Vous, and here is Super Trooper. And their final and, well, latest, I guess final maybe, depending, but I have Voyage too. So, yep, I just thought, you know, why not get the ABBA collection? Again, there's not too many. There's like, there's like nine albums. So the same amount as Kate Bush. So again, why not? Um, I didn't chance, I didn't get to listen to all of them. Three, three out of four is how much I listened to. So I, I heard the debut. Very solid debut. Of course, this is when they were still kind of figuring things out because you know half the songs are sung by by Bjorn and the other half the other half is sung by um, the female singers Agneta and Frida. Um, I, hopefully, I said those names right. Um, you know, it's a solid debut. I'd say I definitely prefer the female vocalist than than Bjorn, but you know Bjorn has a solid voice and you know very solid debut. But then we have Voulez Vous, which is a really great album. Again, some of the deep cuts like As Good As New, um, Angel Eyes I really liked, The like King Has Lost His Crown, um, some fantastic stuff. And of course it has some big hits like the title track, I Have A Dream, uh, Does Your Mother Know, Chicka, 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 you know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to try because my head's all over the place at the moment. But uh, and what's great about these certain these certain editions is that they come with some bonus tracks that weren't on the original album because it has Gimme 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 because I'm pretty sure that song was not part of the album, it was just a single. So it's good to actually have it on a CD. So there you go. Um, I have Super Trooper here. Now this is the one I did not listen to, uh, but I knew some of the songs already. Of course I know the title track, The Winner Takes It All. Um, I know Our Last Summer, um, Lay All Your Love On Me. So yeah, I know the hits, but have not heard the full album yet. And actually, I'm gonna actually I, actually I lied before. I listened to two of the four. I didn't get a chance to listen to this album in full, um, but I know the singles because I do remember when there was a lot of hype surrounding this album. Um, and I only know the singles. Of course, I I remember I still have faith in you and don't shut me down. Um, and I think I think. 
just the notion was also a single, but um, but I don't remember that one as well. Um, but yeah, definitely am curious on the other songs. I've heard good things about it though. But yeah, so again, almost done with the ABBA collection. Again, just need two more. So look out for those sometime in May. Okay, continuing on, we have Aerosmith. And I. this is another CD I didn't get a chance to listen to. I mean, I have heard it, but it's been a long time. Um, and I remember not being a huge fan of it. I mean, I liked Living on the Edge, but not a big fan of the other hits like Crying and Crazy. Um, I'm not crazy for crazy. How about that? Um, but again, it's later period Aerosmith. I'm kind of very hit or miss with it. Um, again, who knows? Maybe if I, when I do get the chance, I'll give it another go and we'll see how I feel about it. We'll see. But again, just want to show that. Um, now this one was a kind of a surprise. This one I also showed in a record store finds video and that was this album by Arctic Fire. We have Neon Bible. Um, her, I, I said before, but I know the band, but don't know any song by them. And yeah, I was pretty impressed by this one. I quite liked it quite a bit. It didn't like blow me away, but I think this, the music sounds pretty nice. It kind of has an indie rock sort of feel to it. Um, has a def have a, it definitely has a vibe to it. Um, again, I don't love it quite yet, but it def I definitely dig it. So I have to listen to it a bit more just to really grasp it. But from what I remember, I really did like it. So here we go. All right, now we have some Beach Boys. Now, both of these are like one of those two, two in one packs. So I got this one, this is Smiley Smile, of course, but it also inclu includes Wild Honey. And there's the disc right there. Again, it's just two albums in one. So yeah, just adding more to the Beach Boys catalog. Uh, so Smiley Smile and Wild Honey. Um, Smiley Smile, I did, hear it before but again it's been a long time and listening to this again after after a while eh, it's okay um of course it has heroes and villains and good vibrations on it, which are classic songs but the rest is kind of mm, doesn't do a whole lot for me um yeah but then you have wild honey now wild honey i feel like is a pretty underrated album they're definitely going in a more soul direction and I know this is when Carl Wilson was starting to take more of a leadership role in the band. And I think it's pretty solid. Some really good stuff here. Um, again, here's the album cover once again. Yeah, I really dig it. Um, the title track, Aren't You Glad? Um, Darling, Here Comes the Night. Let the Wind Blow. Yeah, just a pretty, pretty good album. Um, so there's that. Now this one I did not hear yet because it literally just came today, like no joke, like literally minutes before I started recording this video, this came in. And this is another two for one. This one includes Friends and 2020. Let me just showcase it here. So again, there's 2020 and there's Friends like I already showed. Um, again, it's been a while. Again, I heard this out, these two albums before, but it's been a long time. So I'm, I have high hopes because, especially 2020, I think that was my favorite of these two, if I remember correctly, because it has Do It Again, I Can Hear Music. Um, it has the kind of controversial Never Learn, Never Learn Not to Love, which was originally written by Charles Manson, but they kind of re, but they kind of re, re, reworked it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, definitely glad to have another, some more Beach Boys in the, in the collection. Can you tell I'm a bit, a bit scatterbrained? But we must continue on. Here we have Jeff Beck, Truth. So this was his first solo album, if I remember correctly, and pretty impressed by it. Of course, based on what I've heard before, um, I have Blow by Blow, and that was kind of more of a jazz fusion approach. This one's a bit more, you know, typical late 60s blues, bluesy hard rock. Um, and it's pretty well, pretty well done. Um, you have Ro Rod Stewart on lead vocals, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, I think, and Ron Wood's also on here as well. Um, John Paul Jones actually provides some Hammond organ on on, tr on a couple on a tr couple tracks. Uh, Nippy, Nikki Hopkins. So pretty, pretty good cast here. Um, only ten songs, 
But yeah, it was pretty enjoyable. Some good guitar playing and of course, uh, Rod Stewart's vocals. Very great, especially during this time period. So very glad to get this. And then we get to David Bowie, Earthling. So this is him going in a more techno approach. And I'll be honest, this is not really my favorite um, sound from David Bowie. I mean, if you're a fan of this type of music, then this is gonna be up your alley. But for me, it's kind of like one of those things where I kind of need to be in the right mood for it. Um, and this is not gonna be that often. Um, again, it's not an awful album, but it's just, I wouldn't say it's my cup of tea when it comes to David Bowie. Um, I did know one song. I knew I'm Afraid of Americans. Um, but it's never been one of my favorite songs by him either. Um, but it's an interesting listen, listen, but not really my... I wouldn't recommend this as your first listen for a David Bowie album. Putting it lightly. But overall, not, not too bad. And then we have Coldplay Parachutes. So yeah, I went and got another Coldplay album. Um, I have another one by them. I'll put it right, right there because I... I'm blanking on the name of it at the moment, but I remember kind of liking that one and I decided to get their debut because I know Coldplay gets a lot of crap, um, but if you were to ask like an average Joe, people will say that Parachutes is one of their best albums, if not their only good album, but that's kind of being harsh. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool too. Again, similar to what I said about Arcade Fire, that it has a vibe to it, which I dig. Um, again, it's not like my favorite sound, but definitely is a good one to listen to if you're in the right mood for it. Again, going back to like sort of alternative rock, indie rock sort of sound. Um, but yeah, Don't Panic, um, Shiver was pretty good. Sparks, I know Yellow was a big, was a pretty, is a pretty notable song, but I thought that was pretty good. It's not one of my favorites personally, but um, everything's got, everything's not lost. Yeah, pretty nice debut. Again, Coldplay won't be like a top top tier band for me but I do like some of them I think they're a bit overheated okay now here's an album that I started but I didn't get to finish it because again I didn't have the time um, but I have heard of this album it was kind of passed around a few times in the in the VC and it's this album right here the band's called can and I'm pr I don't know if I'm gonna say this right but it's called Tago Mago again I don't know if I pronounced that correctly but they are a German band, and this is lumped into Krautrock. And if I if I can explain it properly, Krautrock is you know it's made in Germany, of course, but it's kind of a more experimental type of thing. Um, so interesting, and it's kind of, and this album has a sort of psychedelic funk quality to it. And I've only heard the first two songs, and yeah, you can definitely hear that. Um, so again, I can't really give a big opinion on it right now but so far I'm, I'm digging it I'm digging it but now let's go on to some deep purple now we have the house of blue lights of course this album was kind of the follow-up to um, perfect strangers in the in the 80s um, and, you know not as strong as perfect strangers but you know, I will say, I think there are some nice songs on here. I actually did enjoy this one. Um, I like Bad Attitude, um, Call of the Wild. Let's see, uh, trying to remember. Uh, Strange Ways I liked. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid album. I hear, I don't hear many people talk highly of this album, but I think there's some good songs on here. But you know, I will admit, it's not gonna be one of those albums I'll go to every, every, every so often, but you know, there are some nice songs. Um, also, The Unwritten Law is pretty good too. So, there we go. And now we go on to The Doors. Here is Waiting for the Sun. Again, still trying to build that Doors collection. I'm almost done with the Jim Morrison albums. I think I need The Soft Parade. And then I'll have all the albums with Jim Morrison prior to his death. Um, we'll see if I get the others without when he wasn't alive, but yeah, we'll see. I'm not in a huge rush for those. Uh, but yeah, now I will say I didn't get a chance to listen to this one. Um, I know, of course I know the big song on here and that's Hello, I Love You. But I think I did hear this album once, but it was a long time ago. So I don't really remember anything else from it. So 
again, I'll let you, we'll see if this, this album, um, you know, if, see if I remember, because I think, because like I, I think I said this already, but I think I liked it, but again, it's, it's been a while, but there. And here is Europe now. Here is Wings of Tomorrow. Um, I bought two Europe albums last month, and I really enjoyed both of them. Um, and people have said that this is probably their best album. And after hearing it, I can totally hear it. I think it might be my favorite too, honestly. Um, yeah, just a great heavy metal album. Um, great guitar playing. The vocals by Joey Tempest is great. Um, overall, it's a very good album. Um, yeah, this is definitely one that's I'm probably going to go back to. Um, I definitely want to check out more Europe now. So, so yeah, cool. I have the first three albums. Next up, we have Foo Fighters with the debut. Um, and I talked about it before, but of course, this is mainly Dave Grohl. Um, I, and I believe by the time the album came back, that's when he kind of finalized the lineup. Um, because, you know, this was kind of like a side thing. You know, Kurt Cobain offed himself and, and you know, the emotions from that. And I guess Dave... Dave Grohl really wanted to do something, um, and so he made so he basically made this album, um, mainly by himself. Um, I, again, I'm pretty sure there were other people, but it was mainly Dave. Um, and yeah, I actually did hear this album just just this morning. Um, I listened to it on the way to school today, and yeah, again, pretty good. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Again, it's not my favorite rock sound because you know that alternative rock sound. I can I can. It really depends on my mood but you know i think this is pretty good you know the first three songs i think were one of my some of my favorites a uh, good grief was pretty good oh george um um exhausted the last song um watershed yeah i quite liked it so yeah i'm not sure if i'll get more foo fighters again if people have a recommendation you can let me know but yeah overall pretty happy now here's another album I started but didn't get a chance to finish it. And that is Hawkwind, Quark, Strangeness, and Charm. Um, so again, Hawkwind, big space rock act. And I and I said this already, I bought House, uh, uh, what's it called? Hall of the Mountain Grill. And I really enjoyed that one. And so might as well, I saw this in the record store and I just thought, why not? And I think I only listened to the first two songs, and I quite dug it. Um, I think I still prefer Hall of the Mountain Grill so far, but you know, there's some good moments on here. Um, as as of now, again, I need to listen to the rest. But you know, yeah, I don't have much else to add to it. Then we have Kiss. Yes, I bought another Kiss album. This one is Rock and Roll Over from '75, I think. 76, I think. Um, I just got this because I was looking on Amazon and it was, on, it was only five bucks. So I was like, you know, why the heck not? Um, yeah, I, this was pretty good. This was a pretty solid album. I hear mixed opinions on, on this album. I mean, I wouldn't say it's too mixed. I mean, I hear people like it, but people don't really rank it that high, as high as other albums. But yeah, I kind of I kind of like this one. Um, I want you, um, baby driver. That's a good one. Um, hard luck woman. Yeah, the art cover is pretty cool too. I will give it that as well. But yeah, again, kiss. They're again they're not a band I listen to often. But you know when I'm in the right mood, I'm like, yeah. Okay, up next we have Elton John. It's been a while since I got an Elton John. Well, that's that's a lie, because <laughs> I bought uh, what was it called? Uh, sleeping Sleeping in the Past or Sleeping on the Past L last month, I think. Uh, but you know, I, I want to get this one. Um, shout out to Nick. This this is his favorite Elton John album. We have Rock of the Westies. Now this one I did listen to, and yeah, I think it's a pretty good album. It's not. I won't say it's my favorite, uh, but there's some good songs on here like. The melody, in, the medley, I should say, in the beginning is pretty good. Um, Island Girl, that's a fun song. I've always enjoyed Island Girl. Um, I Feel Like a Bullet, um, it's a great song. Uh, Street Kids, um, Billy Bones and the White Spurred, pretty good closing song. Yeah, pretty good one. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, 
to some people that's kind of when he was starting to kind of dip a little bit but you know i think it's still a pretty good album i don't think it's it's not i mean it's not as strong as i'd say the last one uh captain fantastic but it's still good on its own now we have mahavishnu orchestra with bird of fire or birds of fire i should say and again just more great jazz fusion i mean i don't have much else to say about it but i still prefer the inner mounting flame i think the guitar work on that album is absolutely phenomenal this is still good too but yeah again it's just a preference thing but again the playing on here by all the all the band members is top notch as always especially the guitar work still great by john mclaughlin um so yeah yeah not much else to add but very good stuff now here is an interesting one we have christine mcvee with her with a solo album she made in the 80s so yeah i was I was like, you know, I love Christine V, so I know she had some solo albums, so I decided to get this one because this was a pretty big album. Well, pretty big, you know. I wouldn't say it was like a massive hit or anything, but it got some hit singles here. And yeah, I enjoyed this one. Um, you have Christine V, of course, but you also have, um, I know you have a lot of guests on here. Lindsey Buckingham is here, Eric Clapton, Roy Cooper, even Mick Fleetwood makes an appearance with Steve Winwood too. Yeah, there's there's some good songs on here. Um, the first song, Love Will Show Us How, is pretty good. Um, One in a Million, I Got a Hold On Me. I think that was a hit, I think. Um, Keeping Secrets, The Smile I Live For. I mean, if you love Christine McVie, you're going to like this one. And yeah, I certainly did. All right, last month I bought a Brian May solo album, but I went ahead and bought a Freddie Mercury solo album. Of course, this is Mr. Bad Guy. Um, so, you know, you know Freddie's solo work, I like it, but you know, definitely missing something. It needs that, doesn't have that bite that Queen has. But you know, there are some good songs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I didn't like this one because there are some good songs on here, like Made in Heaven, I Was Born to Love You. Um, even some deep cuts I really liked, like Your Kind of Lover um, is pretty good. Um, but there are some other good songs like, of course, the title track I've always enjoyed. There must be more to life than this, which apparently that was supposed to be a duet with Michael Jackson, but that never really came to fruition. Would have been interesting. You can, I mean, you can find on, there's on YouTube you can find people doing mashups of the two. So that's, so that's kind of like an idea. Uh, Living on my own, um, and I think the closing song is really good. Love, love me like there's no tomorrow. That's a nice little kind of ballad type of track in a sense. Uh, but yeah, it's a solid album, but of course, nothing can top Queen. The four of them together, it really, magic really does appear. It's a kind of magic, what can I say? Okay, we're almost done here. I'm going to see if I can get through the remaining. How many do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six more to go. So I'm going to see if I can do this in one go. Right, I showed this one before. We have Paul McCartney and Wings, Venus and Mars. Very good album. I will say, very strong. Um, of course, you have Being Some Mars and Rock Show. Great opening song. Um, Letting Go is pretty good. Um, H and Jar is pretty, it's pretty good. Um, listening to What the Man Said. Crossroads, eh, not, one, not the greatest closer, but it was okay. Um, but yeah, it's a solid album. Um, yeah, again, not much to say. You know, Paul McCartney, what can you say about him? Still kicking it in the 70s. And then, we, then we have another Procol Harum, Procol Harum. I don't know which one's which, <laughs> and I don't really care. I say Procol Harum because I don't know. To me, it sounds. I, I think that sounds better. So we have a salty dog. Anyway, I think this is their third album, and this is a one of those deluxe things, you know, with two discs, kind of like the debut I have up there, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. I think this is probably my favorite album by them so as of right now. Um, yeah, again, I don't have much to say about it. It's like it's not like the greatest thing I've heard, but for what it is, it's this. The music's pretty pleasant, you know. Gary Brooker has a great voice, of course, um, and really the playing on here is pretty top notch. Um, some great keyboard work and piano playing. Um, again, some nice bass work and the guitar when it does. When it does 
Gamora up front, pretty good. I think Robin Trower is still in the band by this point. So yeah, very good stuff. Then I have some punk. We have Ramones leaving home or leave home. This is their second album. And of course, I actually do quite like the Ramones. They're a band I really need to get more of their stuff because I only have three as of now. This album and the debut and Road to Ruin. Um, but this is, again, very solid album, really good stuff here. I mean, when you think of the Ramones, there you go. That's all you gotta say. Um, just fast paced, short songs. All the songs don't overstay their welcome. They're like, in, we say what we have to say, then we're out, next track, that sort of thing. 15 songs too, which again, they're short songs, so you can, you can fit a lot. Um, but yeah, some good stuff. I, again, I always dug the Ramones. They're a band I need to get into more. Okay, Rolling Stones is up next, and I showed this before. We have um, Between the Buttons. This is the US track listing, by the way. Um, I remember I liked this a lot more. I don't know why, because when I re-listened to this album, because I did re-listen to it, getting ready for this, um, I don't know why. I didn't really like it as much. I don't know, I guess I'm not a huge fan of the Broke Pop Stones. I don't know. I guess I prefer the more heavier blues rock sound. Um, but you know, there are, there are songs I like. Um, Let's Spend the Night Together, of course. Ruby Tuesday, of course. That's a great song. But yeah, everything else is kind of hit or miss. Some songs I was like, okay, I like this one. But then there are other tracks where I'm like, eh, it's okay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of disappointing, I will say. It's not a bad album, but again, I don't think I'm digging this period of the Stones. And that was the album right before they done their Titanic Majesty's request. And you know my thoughts on that album. Okay, final two. Now I did hear this album. Hydra by Toto. Really good stuff. I think this is probably a very underrated album. Then again, I haven't heard that many Toto albums. I have three now. Uh, but this is really great. This is their second album following the debut, which did m massive numbers. Um, this album didn't do as well uh, because they were kind of deciding to go more on exper experimental. I wouldn't say it's like crazy or anything, but you know, they're definitely playing around with different styles on this album. There's hints of progressive rock on here. It still has those, it still has those like catchy melodies, of course, but not as catchy, I guess. And you know, it really did hurt the album, but I think this is pretty great stuff. If you have not heard this album, go give it a listen because there's some, I think pretty much all the songs I enjoyed. So yeah, some great stuff there. And the final album I have for the CD haul for April is Bob Welch, French Kiss. Funny, I showcase a Christine McVie solo album. So here's another Fleetwood Mac member solo album. And Christine McVie is actually featured on this album. I know she provides some backing vocals, but of course, Bob Welch, I mean, the Bob Welch era of Fleetwood Mac, very underrated in my opinion. Um, so I decided to give his solo album a go because I know this has a re-recorded version of Sentimental Lady, which was originally on Bare Trees. And this version on here, the, the version on here actually did, was actually a pretty big hit for Bob. So pretty cool. And you know, those songs have some differences. The song, is sh the version on here is shorter and you know, Christine McVie's vo backing vocals are a bit more restrained, but yet more pronounced. I don't know if that makes sense, but pretty, I really do like how Christine sounds on that track. But yeah, it's a great song. Both versions are great. Um, but the rest of the album is pretty good too. It kind of has a, you know, kind of yacht rock sort of feel, very soft rock heavy. But I like that sound, so again, it doesn't bug me. Overall, pretty good. Um, I'll name some other songs I like, like Easy to, Easy to Fall is great, um, Hot Love, Cold World, Ebony Eyes, um, Lose Your Heart. Yeah, it's a very solid album. So there you go. And that's all the CDs I have acquired throughout the month of April. So my battery is about to die, so I gotta make this outro quick. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, subscribe if you are new. Of course, comment below any thoughts on any of the stuff I picked up. And of course, if you wanna share what you picked up this month, then go ahead. I look forward to reading the comments. Hopefully in the next video, I'll be less blah. So anyhow, um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.
Thank you.